Instead of using the tree as a metaphor I'm interested in the substitution that Deleuze and Gattery have suggested. The rhizome. The rhizome is a curious plant and an equally curious metaphor it travels horizontally instead of vertically so unlike a tree t the rhizome works on more planes. It moves horizontally, vertically and has depth. It is truly three-dimensional. So to study music is also to learn to think music. Lift up over sounding sounds, are like history, can you see it, dense and lay it, blend it, and forever thinning and thickening. One hears no unison, only a constant figure, to ground motion of densities, decays, and fades, of overlapping, alternating, and interlocking sounds one sound stands out momentarily, then just as quickly fades into a distance, overlapped or echoed by new, or repeated emergence in the mosaic. Isn't that a way to describe our history, our society, our consciousness, to lift up over sounding, to become at once transcendent and immanent, embodied and beyond self, isn't that what we call the mystical experience, and the one we experience in musical expression? Sound can raise the question about the relation of voice and place, to provoke you to hear sound making as place making. And when you hear the way birds overlap in the forest and you hear the way voices overlap in the forest, all of a sudden you can grasp something at a sensuous level t hat is considerably more abstract and difficult to convey in a written ethnography, the shared experience of the breath. The rhizome works at the sensuous intellectual, spiritual levels and connects them together. A rhizome is connections. Different levels of official image. Historical lines provoke one another. History is counterpunctal and political. Consider the relationship between Theodore Adorno and the Frankfurt School in America and the Beat Movement. Both lines occur simultaneously, and have much to say to one another. As Deleuze suggested, everything important that has happened, or is happening takes the root of the American rhizome, the beatniks, the underground, bands and gangs, successive lateral offshoots and immediate connection with an outside. It is poetic that Adorno disregards jazz out of hand. Poetic because it is a jazz player. Lester Young credited with a word which continues to undermine the culture industry, cool. The beat generation, transformed by the cool, established the independence of the cool. Late night radio, underground clubs, bootleg recordings, independent bands, and private zines all participate in the cool. The chic distance from the culture industry and the critical undermining of the symbols of the culture industry is unheard by Adorno. He spent little time in dark alleys, or in old cars zigzagging across a countercultural America. The cool is a machine, but one dedicated to decentralization. Hippies move out of major cities to take back the land in the name of the cool. Against the total administration of life and death they move out following Thoreau's trail. Back to the pond, where the water is cool. Beats and hippies elevate the nomad and challenge the center. History is always written from the sedentary point of view, and in the name of a unitary state apparatus, at least a possible one, even when the topic is nomads. Then what is lacking? What is lacking is nomadology. The decentralization of history, that is constructed, when you think musically? Yes. And what is that called? Deleuze called it nomadology. Nomadology is thinking musically. Music is a rhizome. To think musically is to think the rhizome. To think the rhizome is to do nomadology. Tracing lines of the rhizome, to create a map of the social world, my project to learn how to think like music. To think like a rhizome. To think in multiple dimensions. I think then I will have a different understanding of how the world works, and how I work in the world. Thinking together is part of thinking musically I think. Thinking in the rhizome. Thinking through connections. Not only in harmony. But in dissonance. In pulse. In meter and phrase. In tension and release. I relationships with history and the future. All of this is thinking musically. It's interesting how technology like us allows Michael to experiment with thinking like the ancient philosophers. In dialogue. Is that postmodernism? I think so. Postmodernism is bringing back historical forms and applying them after modernity. I think this is also thinking musically. So we are like characters in the Republic. Yes, we are just like that. We are aspects of Michael's mind working out something in dialogue. In counterpoint. We are already being thought musically. So what are you waiting for start asking questions? Yeah, so what are you waiting for start asking questions?